Hi, welcome back to another episode of Let's Talk About This. Um, my guest today is a mental health activist. Uh, she goes by the name of Kay. And uh, Kay is a native of uh, Willingboro, New Jersey. Uh, her mission is to raise awareness and to amplify the importance of mental health. Uh, she encourages, empower, and support people that are faced with challenges without an outlet. So, uh, Kay, how you doing? Welcome to the podcast. Thank you. Thank you for having me. And I'm great. How are you? I'm good. I'm good. I was just running around here trying to get things in order at the last minute. And I looked up, you know, and like looked up and I'm like, okay, it's almost time for this podcast. Let me get myself in front of this <laughs> camera. <laughs> I know all about it. <laughs> yeah. Uh, Kay, um, mental health, you know, this is a good topic to talk about because we can never have enough conversations about mental health. Uh, so many people are faced with it, including myself. Um, and people just don't know how to identify whether they have mental health and how about how to go about getting the help from your research and from your experience and from, you know, both of our perspectives, cause we're not, you know, I don't have a degree in psychology, but I'm, I, I usually talk to people based on the experience that I went through and the experience that I, um, the things that I see within the people around me, including family and things like that. Um, how do you go, how do people go about from your perspective and your experience, how do people go about identifying that they have a mental illness? Okay. So for starters, I also, to, to your point, I want to um, also point out that I am not a psychologist. This is all experience-based, um, you know, Experience for me, I believe, is the best teacher because you can read a million books, but if you hadn't walked in those shoes, you really can't empathize and or give um, a clear vision on how to move forward or move beyond your challenges, right? So for me, um, I believe that people, in in terms of them identifying that they may be dealing with some mental health issues, um, for one, they have to be educated on what mental health encompasses. Right. Because for so long within the black community, it was considered taboo. And, you know, it was, that you know, stated that black people don't go to therapy. They go to church, which is true. But God says faith without works is dead. So that means you have to actively contribute, uh, be actively, you know, contributing to your 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 wellness. That's true. So, you know, for people to be able to identify that they may be dealing with some mental health issues, they have to, for one, um, like if they haven't dealt with their past traumas, you know, a lot of people have PTSD from their upbringing, their childhoods. A lot of people have been sexually molested. They grew up in abusive households. They had parents who were substance abuse users. There's a whole plethora of, of situations that people have it tend to because, again, back in the day, it was what goes on in my house stays in my house. Mm -hmm. So people tend to bury it and then they go through life. Um, and then they encounter more life because life will never stop lifing, right? So you encounter more things. And when you suppress those feelings, emotions, ideologies, and thought processes, sometimes it'll it'll leak out in a, in a different way or different area of your life. Right. So the way to identify that you may be dealing with some issues is, are you depressed? Do you feel anxious? You know, are you withdrawing from family functions and friends? Are you constantly just wanting to be alone with your thoughts do you want to be in a house you know in a house with all the shades drawn and you know just in a dark place so mm -hmm. people have to ask themselves are they okay and right. if they're not okay they have to be okay with understanding that they are not okay right so it's really a lot of self-reflection that people need to um identify they need to turn that mirror around and look at themselves and and see if they're living in their most authentic state or if they're living through the traumas that was ascribed to them. And that's the thing, you made a good point because we don't, um, you know, we we don't identify with the 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 um the depressions and things that we have on the inside. You're right about that. And it can explode, you know, in different yes. areas of your life, you know, um, in, in your behavior and things like that. Yes. From my own experience, because I didn't realize that I was depressed until the year of 
I think it was the year 2000 is when I was diagnosed with depression and I had no idea what depression was. Um, like right. said, I had to educate myself and, mm -hmm. um, I know that my doctor kept saying, you need to go see a psychiatrist. And the first thing I was saying to myself, why is this lady trying to send me to go see a psychiatrist? I am not crazy. And that's the thing. People yep. think that we're crazy. You know, we, people think that mental seeking help and going to see a psychiatrist means that you're crazy. And, um, and that's not the case. It's just that you need to talk, talk it out, whatever you're holding in, whatever you're going through, you need to talk to somebody about it. So that's and, that you said that, you know, and to your point, um, you know, people, you know, the reason why you didn't understand or know what depression was is because within the black and brown communities, again, it's not about race, but it's just more so about our experiences, right? right? So within our community, these types of conversations and or diagnosis was never on our radar. That's so true. it was like normal to us. This is just, you know, we're, we're taught to be resilient and just keep piling on and you know so that that rings true with a lot of people because if it isn't on your radar how can you try to correct something that you don't believe to be there right another thing like you said this is one of the main reasons why black and brown people don't get help is because they're they don't want people to say they're crazy mm -hmm. you know what i mean like if if somebody like think about it if it was like three people in a group and one of the friends is like man i'm i'm really going through it like think about killing myself they go but like yo this, this boy is crazy you hear this fool like, right mm -hmm. people don't want to hear that and or be viewed as that so they suppress not realizing that that suppression could be deadly mm -hmm. and lead to other things so these conversations need to be had and because i had my own experience with it mm -hmm. i don't mind being the voice of that and telling people that it is okay not to be okay mm-hmm Mm -hmm. that's true yeah because I had to find out first of all I had to say when when I was told when I was diagnosed I had to um first of all uh, like I was saying before I had to educate myself on what depression was because I was like when they diagnosed me I was like okay what is depression because they was like the first thing that happened I had a uh, what happened was I'm gonna tell you exactly what happened I was okay. at I was in a nail shop getting my nails done with a girlfriend of mine and I, I was feeling like really weird. I didn't know what the feeling was, but it was just a feeling that I never felt before. So I told my girlfriend, I said, you know what? We got to go. I couldn't even finish getting my nails done. That's how bad I was feeling. So okay. anyway, um, we got in the car and I had um, my, my hands started cramping up on a steering wheel. And uh, I think I was maybe a block away from my house. And uh, I ended up having a panic attack. I had no idea what, I felt like, I don't know what a heart attack feels like. Cause I, you know, but to me, that's what it felt like. It felt like a, um, I thought I was having a heart attack. But mm -hmm. anyway, when I went to the hospital, they said, they asked me, they said, is there anything going on in your life? Is there, a, I said, yeah, there's a whole lot of shit going on in my life right now. You know what I'm saying? I said, I just went through a divorce. Uh, I have two children. Uh, my daughter is getting ready to have a baby. I have three mouths I got to feed. You know what I mean? It was a lot going on in my life at the time. And right. I didn't realize that that was causing, that caused my um, depression, not to blame anything on anybody, but mm -hmm. it was like a burden that I was taking on that I didn't realize that, like you said, not seeking the help. Uh, I didn't realize that it, it it affected me. And then from that point forward, um, that's when I was told, okay, you need to sit down. You need to talk to somebody. You need to go see a psychiatrist and this and that. But eventually after, you know, being stubborn, you know how black folks is, we stubborn. I ain't, yeah. I ain't going to no doctor. Yes. I, I yes. None of that. Uh, but then eventually I was like, you know what? Maybe this lady, let me go see this doctor and see what this lady is telling me to do. So eventually when I went, I started talking to the psychiatrist and, you know, um, and then with the medication and the counseling, everything started to come together. And then I started feeling better. I started thinking better. I started making better choices. Um, I was, I wasn't, you know, confused because it, it, it could affect, uh, mental illness can affect with you mentally, you know, you can't think, yeah. you can't concentrate, you can't do any of those things. And this is from my experience. So 
I know that there are a lot of people out there that are facing the same things that we are discussing right now. And people don't yes. want to talk about it. They might not want to talk about it or they don't know that's what they have. But this, right. this is something that it's a serious illness because it can do so much. It can affect other people around you. Absolutely. And, yeah. Absolutely. A lot of people succumb to this the mental health crisis like i just did a um a report on a young lady from texas 21 years old beautiful girl had mm -hmm. two kids. she she died by suicide you mm -hmm. know approximately 1 million people die by suicide in the us alone that's not involving the other countries 1 million people which is equivalent to 139 people per day and one person every 10.9 minutes mm, wow. this is a serious serious thing because if you're not right in here because you can't escape your mind your mind is with you all day every day that's true and people don't understand that if you don't cater to your mind and your overall self-care you of course you oh, i ain't never gonna be suicidal but you can't say that because that's one right. time you can just snap at any given at, at any given moment that's true we're human mm -hmm. whether we're white black green purple orange or gray we're human and we have brains and for our brains to be a measly three pounds, it mm -hmm. is the absolute most powerful organ in our bodies. Mm -hmm. So we must begin normalizing talking to people. And, you know, another thing I'll say for like the reason why I'm really careful, like I always say mental health, because when people hear mental illness, they, it's nothing wrong with me. I'm not crazy. Mm -hmm. because of terminology. Right? right. But mental health, simply speaks to your overall well-being as right. mental illnesses are clinical diagnosis which is like bipolarism uh cutting schizophrenia mm -hmm. so when someone says <clears throat> excuse me to you how is your mental health that is not to suggest that something's wrong with you that's just right. making sure you're okay right. and if you are not let me help you you know get the resources that you need if you need to talk you know people don't want to be judged and mm -hmm. people don't like showing vulnerability. That's true. That's true. But there's a lot of different moving parts in this whole mental health realm. And advocating for it, I feel like it's it's important. And I, I really have been really successful when I do my videos. A lot of people don't. People comment. But a lot of people inbox me. Mm -hmm. I have private conversations. You know, one thing is that I, God has 100% blessed me with is people trust me. Mm -hmm. And that is a key factor in doing what I do mm -hmm. because they know that number one, I'm not going to judge them. Right. Number two, I will never repeat their business. Right. Um, that's just not me. That's not my, that's not what I do. So right. the fact for trusting me and opening up mm -hmm. and I'm able to help them, that makes everything that I've endured right. so much because I had to go through it in order to help other people through it as well. That's true. And people got to realize, like you said, people, people have to realize that you're, people think that they're by themselves when they're dealing with mental, you know, it's not yes. something, you know, that's another thing. I thought I was by myself. I was like, am I the only one going through this right now? But hey. then when I started talking to other people, I was like, they was like, okay, I'm glad you're talking about this. Cause I'm going through the same thing. Yeah. You know, yes. I'm like, yeah. okay, so I'm not the only one that's going through this, you know, at all. Everybody yeah. dealing with something. Mm -hmm. Every maybe different things, but everyone struggles with something mm -hmm. because, right? And to suggest that you are perfect and you're not, that means you're equivalent to God, and ain't no one equivalent to that to God, right? So people, you know, again, people just want to, especially with the social media world, everybody wants to paint this distorted picture, right? Instead of accepting where they are, because right. which what, what you except you're able to heal and help yourself. But if you want to keep denying the presence of whatever is going on internally, mm -hmm. it's, it's going to come out. Like you can lose a lot of weight. You could be stressed out. Like you said, depressed, mm -hmm. you know, there's a lot of things that can come from that. And people just really have to be made comfortable with having these conversations and understanding that we are all in this fight together. No right. one's, no one's alone. Mm -hmm. We may have different stories, but we're all experiencing some type of mental psychosis. Well, let me not say psychosis because people will say, oh, I'm not crazy. Right. We're all dealing with something internally. Internally, right. Period. Right. And it's and, okay. Right. And that's the thing. It's on, it's, it's, it's uh, mental, mental health or mental illness is something on the inside, something we can't see. And I think that's another reason 
why, and this is just my opinion, I think that's another reason why uh, people don't really want to kind of like, I guess the word I'm looking for is they want to identify with it because it's something that's hidden. But like you said, our mind is a part of our body and our mind has to be healthy just as, as well as our everything else in our body. Like me, I'm very, very overprotective of my peace. Like I'm easy, yeah. I will easily cut a person off real quick. I don't like no negativity around me. Uh, I don't want no negative people around me. I don't want no negative people in my house. Uh, you know, um, I know that. like you said, we're not perfect. We're not perfect. Everybody got issues. And social media, especially social media has this thing where they want to, everybody want to judge everybody and want to point things out. And, yes. But they don't want to identify with their own mental health. You know, right. if you're constantly posting something negative, you got some issues going on. Yeah. Yeah. You know what I'm saying? Yeah. Um, you, 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 if you're postly, if you're constantly mad at somebody's success or with their, or, or their growth, then you got some issues going on. Absolutely. You know what and I mean? People and people don't want to accept that. They want right. to make it out everyone else. Right. Um, for example, when I did the, uh, when I did the, um, the interview on the young lady from Texas, I looked at, you know, cause she had, she was putting up social media posts about, you know, not wanting to be here anymore. She's tired of being a parent by herself. You know, the kid's father is not involved and, you know, people always, Oh, I'm praying for you. But people like that need people who are going to be proactive. Right? right. But then I'm reading the comments on the article. People are, I was, I was really mortified when I read the comments, people are rude, they're mean, and they're cruel. Mm -hmm. Even in this young girl's death, in her vulnerability, people are, oh, now she's in hell burning, you know, you're selfish. Why would you do that to your kid? People can't, you cannot begin to explain and understand what you, excuse me, you can't begin to understand what you've never gone through. That's right. As someone who was on the brink of suicide, mm -hmm. I have a perception on it because I too used to feel like that mm -hmm. when people come I like, you know, especially as a mother, mm -hmm. how could you to your children? Now, I wasn't judgmental about it, but right. I couldn't fundamentally understand it. But when you occupy those shoes, mm -hmm. you understand how that happens. Mm -hmm. People snap and they're not in their right mind. They're clearly, not. They're, they're not. not capable of thinking of anything other than all of that negativity that, that permeates their brains. Right. You can't escape your mind. So you have to take care of it. So just the way people take care of their bodies with exercising mm -hmm. and diet. And you wouldn't tell a person who has diabetes not to get treatment. Exactly. You know what I mean? So people have to treat their health the same way and right. not be judgmental about people who want to make their life easier and, you know, less burdened. And, you know, it's not up for us to judge. Yeah. But people have to, especially within our community, we have to begin supporting encouraging and uplifting that's right one, and not being like oh she did she did he did right that's that's not helping that's exacerbating a, a bad situation it's just making a bad situation worse like it is yeah it's making it a bad because we don't know what people are dealing with that's why i try to stay away from judging other people mm -hmm. because you know um what a person is dealing with we we only we don't know what goes on behind these cameras or behind these yeah. computers or behind social media what people are dealing with in their own personal life and then for them to be a part of a community called social media and to uh, have to deal with the judgment on top of what you're already dealing with at home uh yeah. can be uh like you said it could be devastating to somebody you know mm -hmm. it could cause somebody to commit suicide um i know i've already um Two people, I know two people who committed suicide. Um, my ex-husband's sister committed suicide and I took her in, not knowing that she was at that stage, mm -hmm. you know, to where she wanted to take her own, her own life. But right. I never judged her, you know. I took right. her in, I sat down with her, I talked to her. Um, and when I found out she committed suicide, it, it was it was devastating. And she was so young. She was in her early twenties and mm -hmm. I didn't know that it was that bad. You know, yeah. Uh, yeah. I had a neighbor who, um, who lived, uh, this was a few years back, a neighbor who 
she was drinking a lot, uh, popping pills. Um, I would invite her a lot. I knew she was going through something. So I would bring her into my house and have personal Bible studies. I'd let her be a part of my personal Bible studies that I was having. Mm -hmm. Um, she came to the Bible study intoxicated and, uh, I didn't judge her, you know, uh, but I did bring her in and I, you know, I consoled her. I talked to her because I knew she was going through something. And then she was living with somebody who was a drug addict, which didn't help two drug right. addicts can't live together, you know? Right. Uh, and then, um, next thing you know, I get a call at work that she killed herself. And that just shocked me. It just, you know, she stepped in front of a train and, and, um, oh, God. yeah. And, uh, it was, it was just, I had to leave work. That's how bad it was because I had built a close relationship with her and I was trying to save her. I was, I, I was sort of like kind of trying to save her life because I knew she was dealing with something, but you know, we have to be careful of the things that we say to one another, you know, Absolutely. You know, um, sometimes people tend to always want to put other people down to make themselves feel good. Right. You right. Know? And how how does that even make sense in their mind? Like, right. To, uh, highlight someone else's deficiencies to make yourself feel good. And that in itself says that you're you yourself are dealing with a lot and you need to come to terms mm -hmm. with what you're feeling, mm -hmm. because no way you can feel good from that. Right. Feeling good by helping people, encouraging them. And letting them know that you're there for them. Sometimes you can't force yourself on people, but as long as they know you're there, mm -hmm. that's all pretty much that they need and mm -hmm. know that you're not going to judge them. And, you know, sometimes people just need you to listen. They may not even want advice or need advice. Mm -hmm. They just want to be able to vent because think about it. I know for me, like, if I keep stuff in, well, I, I'm not good with that. So I typically say what I have to say, mm -hmm. but it's not say it's how you say it. But if you constantly build and you keep and it festers and something else happens and you suppress it and it festers something else happens you're going to snap one day mm -hmm. you can be all smiles you can be beautiful you can be handsome you can dress good you can have money mm -hmm. but none of that stuff matters it if matter. it is not it in good condition mm -hmm. and yeah. we have to begin to be okay with that that's right that's nothing right. wrong nothing wrong with it what's wrong is allowing that toxicity to control your life because ultimately if you're not mentally well you you're going to live through the things that has happened to you the things that has hurt you the things that are, are occurring you're mm -hmm. not living in your most authentic state and you know personally we get one life to live i want to be happy that's right me too you know what I mean? Even if and I got, even if I got to cut off every, including family, if you got to cut family off, your happiness let, is your priority. I'm going to tell it. you something. Let me tell you something about that. <laughs> so with family and you know, we didn't ask for these people. They were assigned to us. Okay. Right. right. They're not exempt. If they're not adding value, if they're constantly negative, draining you, you know, you have to either withdraw or compartmentalize. That's right. I actually video about that too you know with people you know having friends family whomever co-workers that are negative and if you're trying to remain in a positive space again because life never stops lifing That's so right. if you choose to look and focus on the positive and mm -hmm. you have some life that's always trying to bring you darkness but you're not at a level where you feel confident cutting them off i say deal with them in doses right mm -hmm. you control how much how long they're in your presence that's because right. you can only endure but for so long. Mm -hmm. So some people like us aren't just cut through. Like, yeah, I, I love you, but I have to love you from a distance because you're penetrating my serenity. And that for me is everything. Mm -hmm. Mm -hmm. You know what I mean? So if people aren't comfortable with just cutting people off, then they need to deal with these people in doses mm -hmm. and just kind of hold a situation in terms of how long they're in their presence. Mm -hmm. you know? mm -hmm. Yeah. Because that that's true. And I had a friend come and visit me and, and, and when she came, she came, her, her energy was bad. And I was mm. like, I'm sorry, you got to leave. I said, I, I love you, but you got to go because I can't have that negative energy around me, you know, go home, go home, get yourself together, take your medication, do whatever you got to do and then come back and see me. Um, because I, I have to pe protect my energy, my space, Absolutely. my peace, my mental, you know, Oh, absolutely yeah so I mean, well you know mm -hmm. what i mean like you are in full control over what you allow to penetrate your peace mm -hmm. and your 
everything because when you don't have peace and stillness, you can't properly function. You can't. You, you know what I mean? It's just too much going on. Mm hmm. Yeah. I'm telling you, I had to, I, and I, you know, and it, it, it's sometimes, you know, it's, it, it, it can hurt, you know, when it, when it's people that's close to you, you know, when it's people that you love, um, but they don't understand that your peace is your priority. It's my Absolutely. priority for me. You know, I got things I'm trying to do. I got things I got, uh, I'm trying to accomplish. I got to be in a clear state of mind. Absolutely. You know what I'm saying? I can't have you around me and everything that I throw out to you as an idea is a negative or, oh, uh, I don't think you should do that. Or no, I don't think, no, no, this is my life. This is this decision I'm going to make for me. I got to live this life. Like you said, we only get one life to live. Right. You know? And um, I'm not going to spend the rest of my life. If you want to spend the rest of your life being miserable, that's on you. Cool. <laughs> but I'm not going <laughs> to yeah, you're not hey. gonna bring it over here. Like, no. Right. Your vibes, energy, vibes tell everything. Energy tell everything. Even on social media, I'm quick to delete people. I'm quick to cut people off. Friends or no friends. Uh, you know, uh, you know, because just like we have to be careful to, of the people that we keep in our company, we have to be careful of the same people we keep in our company on social media. Yep. Yeah. You know, it's terrible. <laughs> When you go on social media, it's just so much negativity. Mm -hmm. You know, you know, people are fighting and, you know, people are, you know, it, the videos that go viral are always negative in nature. Mm -hmm. Right. And I know for me initially starting, that was a scary thing because I felt like, OK, so because my message is positive. Right. You don't really get the the. the what's the word I'm looking for? The acknowledgement or the, you know. People aren't really checking for positive things. They love the negativity, love the chaos, you know, the killing. And the, they love that. They mm -hmm. not even necessarily love, but they like to. They're engaged in that. Right. That's to understand that it's not about that. It's you know, if I save one person, if I can help one person, mm -hmm. I'm doing diligence and I'm doing what God has ordained me to do. Mm -hmm. Um. So I had to be conscious of that. But I, I, one thing is I can say is, I'm okay with being that beacon of light. Mm -hmm. You would never go on my page and see anything negative. Right. Even if I'm having a bad day. I would mm -hmm. never impose that on somebody else. On oh, somebody would, else. Exactly. Because yeah, that negativity is contagious. It is. It is absolutely contagious. And like you said, you have to prioritize mm -hmm. your mental health. But I even told people, I suggested in one of my videos, you know, when you are already in a, a, a negative space, limit how much you watch the news, limit your social media intake. Mm -hmm. then being around people who are negative because you don't want those actions to exacerbate what you are already feeling mm -hmm. Mm -hmm. you have to protect you you have to process what you're currently feeling and not by taking on all that extra junk that really doesn't have anything to do with you exactly you know and, what i mean yep exactly it takes, it takes discipline yep I was just, I just printed this out on um, this right here, the Center for Disease Control and Preve uh, Prevention. Uh -huh. and I was um, I was amazed at what it said here. It says here that um, the, the list of, uh, it says what causes mental illness. And it says here, there is no single cause for mental illness. And then it says a number of factors can contribute to a risk for mental uh, illness, such as uh, adverse childhood experiences, such as like we you was just talking about uh, the history of sexual abuse and trauma, uh, violence, things that we dealt with as a kid coming up in the kid and people we hold on to those things like yeah. I never I didn't grow up experiencing sexual abuse, but it was brought into my family through someone else's family and um and I didn't know that it affected one of my loved ones, you know, um, and I didn't find out that they were sexually abused until later on. But then I, I didn't understand why they were so angry, you know, and then I found out later on they were sexually abused. And I was like, man, why didn't I notice? I just felt like I felt like a lot of it was my fault because I felt like I didn't protect them like I should have. And. You know, um, I had to cut that family member off, never spoke to that family member ever to this day. Uh, once I found out that it was them who did it, oh. um, it just, 
it just, I was just so, so upset because it was somebody that was close to me. You know, the people that you, that can hurt you the most are the ones that are close to you. And it's crazy because you wouldn't, I didn't think this until like years ago, you know, right. but it, um, the, the trauma that a lot of uh, these young kids and people uh, uh, deal with at an uh, early age and how it affects them long-term when they become adults. And then it spills over to someone else is, it's, it's sad. It's yeah, dysfunction is is contagious. Yeah. You know, your point, uh, you know, anytime a child is sexually molested, nine times out of ten, it is always a family member, a trusted neighbor, or a family friend. Mm -hmm. It's always someone close to them. Now, not to say it doesn't happen, you know, sporadically, right. but it and the thing with statistics are because I'm not really big, I don't look at the statistics, I'll read it, I'll look at it, but there's a lot of underreported child sexual abuse that's true so those numbers are nothing right compared to what they really are because people don't talk about it and growing up you weren't able to talk about it that's so true. when people you know and that's one of the worst things I, I i that's like one of the greatest sins i think a person can commit although there's none greater than the other but for me i feel like when you when you violate a child a young child, a defenseless child, mm -hmm. and you commit that type of acts on them, you are like the worst person in this world because you are stealing their innocence. Exactly. And you're creating a deficiency and a void that they're going to have to try to fill later on in their lives. Mm -hmm. How, you know what I mean? And That's we'll never able to really understand the mindset of a person like that because true. they're not right in the mind we can't identify with that we can't that's you true. know and that's the worst thing you can do because now this child will not be their authentic self they're going to start living through the things that happened to them the trauma and yeah. the trauma and then yeah. to call the injury the person who it was mm -hmm. how long it endured Mm -hmm. Where was my mom and dad? No one protected me. So this goes on and under, under, <clears throat> excuse me, um, children who don't um, have parents who protect the under protected kids become overprotective mm -hmm. parents. You know what I mean? And mm -hmm. sometimes that's not good too. So it's just the dysfunction. So it all, to, to sum it up, we all have to man ourselves. Yes, we true. have to make sure that we're in our best selves because then we, that can trickle down to our children, our grandchildren, our friends. You have to cut the head of the snake off somewhere. That's true. Yeah. But when yeah. you don't, it just, it just keeps going. Yeah. And it affects generations to come, you know? That's why I was so overprotective of my children when they was little. And mm -hmm. I, I didn't allow them to stay overnight at other people's houses. Um, mm -hmm. And I used to tell my kids, I said, look, I don't know what's going on in that person's house. Um, and vice versa they probably don't they don't know what's going on in my house but it, this is my right, house right. i know what's going on in my house <laughs> right if they want to spend the night they could come over here but you ain't <laughs> going over there <laughs> i know that's right <laughs> yeah i was like very over protective of my kids i was like and you know i just didn't trust anybody you know when it came down to have leaving my kids with people um the only person i did trust was um like I was just saying earlier, a family member and that the family member was a person who betrayed me by, you know, uh, abuse, sexually abusing my, one of my children. And, um, once, like I said, once I found out that that happened, I was like, if I ever, if I ever catch, if I ever, I never saw him again a day in my life after I found out because he, he knew what the after effect was going to be. Uh, <laughs> so, uh, never heard from him. He disappeared, uh, and, um, never spoke to him to this day, but you know, like, like I was going back to what I was saying is as parents, we got to be more, um, conscious when it comes to leaving our children different places uh, with different people, um, uh, including family members. Like you said, yeah. uh, you just don't know. Um, There's nothing. It's just yeah. you, have to, you have to protect your children because they cannot protect themselves. They period. can't. They can't. 
they can't because you never know where all the anger that you 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 don't know where the anger stems from you're like right. why, is this, why is she so angry why is this is why is she reacting like this why is she <laughs> now i know why you know yeah um yeah but you know it's sad um you know it's just that so many so many people are dealing with mental illness and you know they don't know um they just don't know how to i guess go about uh, getting the help, I guess, is what mm -hmm. I'm trying to say, uh, or identify with the feelings that they're having, you know, which right. is, you know, so. Right. But, but <clears throat> they have to start somewhere. The first, start. the first step is identifying what you feel and accepting that you feel that way. Mm -hmm. And get help. Absolutely. Yeah. You know, because what you resist persists. So if you keep resisting what you feel is going to persist and it's going to permeate your entire being until it's going to keep knocking until you open a door That's true. and actually want to be better and want to move beyond whatever is weighing you down mm -hmm. because let's face it all of that stuff gets heavy mm -hmm. you know, especially when you're still treading through life you know post-covid you know mm -hmm. a lot of people was ex a lot of people's mental states was exacer exacerbated by covid because mm -hmm. now they're home all day. It's uncertainty. We've never, anyone in this, a part of this generation has never experienced anything like that before. Mm -hmm. Although it started in like the 1920s, this was new to us. Right. So you're shut down. You can't go to work. You know, you don't know what's going to happen. The uncertainty, people were dying. Mm -hmm. There's this, you know, there was a lot of moving parts. Yeah. With COVID in itself. Yeah. And it affects a lot of us economically too, you know, so people got affected financially. People lost their jobs. People lost their houses. People lost their boats, their cars. Yeah. We was losing Absolutely. everything. We're like, oh my God. I mean, how I'm going to survive? How I'm going to make it? And then the right. crime went up. It just got crazy. People got out here robbing and killing and scamming. Yeah. You know, it's so yeah. much scamming on social media. Uh, People trying to get a dollar here and there. People trying to steal money out people's bank accounts. It's yeah, it just it's, one triple effect after another. Yeah, exactly. So think about dealing with that stuff, mm -hmm. but you also have PTSD because you were molested as a child, or you grew up in an abusive household and you don't know how to conduct yourself. Right. Like people have to be okay, like because a lot of these things that people were exposed to was not their fault. Right. And once they accept that that was not their fault and that they were a recipient mm -hmm. of Experiencing, I think they can move beyond it because a lot of times people internalize mm -hmm. and they make theirs when it was not theirs to begin with. It was someone else who was not mentally right. Mm -hmm. So maybe they it happened to them. So mm -hmm. it's normal. You know, if you want to keep going, digging back, you know, to people's uh, core, a lot of times people who molest were molested. Mm -hmm. You know what I mean? This is not to, you know, just demonize them right. because they too are victims right. of sexual abuse or what <clears throat> excuse me Ooh. it just go from oh. one one generation to the to the next it does yeah it does mm -hmm. you know and people like i said people have to cut the head of the snake off that's the only way to really move beyond it and they have to accept the fact that they're not okay and mm -hmm. that it's fault mm -hmm. and really begin to get to the core of why you feel the way you feel and now let's figure out how you move beyond it right you have to be active you know right. You gotta you gotta go to now we gotta talk about solutions yes how to get yes. yourself better get your mind right get your mind better i know yep. for me what i do is personally i like to go to the gym i've been mm -hmm. eating right working out i read a scripture every morning to start my day yes uh like i said i'm very very proactive when it comes to my my uh peace of mind mm -hmm. um i you know i had to cut people off uh and, uh, you know, especially coming from what I just came from, I just came from an injury. I just got hurt. Uh, and I, it took me, it took me two years to recover, almost two years, and I'm still recovering physically. And, okay. uh, so I'm very, very, very conscious of what's around me, who's around me, who I'm dealing with, uh, you know, um, uh, and, you know, I gotta be, I have to be, you know, um, like you said, we only live once. We are, we, we have to be happy in this life. Absolutely. We and we control of our own happiness. We mm -hmm. are in control. No one else can control that. We are. So we have to man that and be at the, at the forefront of it and accept that you are in control and that 
no one else can no one else can do anything to you unless you allow it. At a, in, as when you're an adult, not That's when true. I adolescents, but as an adult. As an adult, right. You have to protect your peace by any means necessary. So right. again, want to be happy you have to like you said cut off certain people even if it hurts yeah. you have to and that you you are your own priority That's no right. one's going to take care of you like you're going to take care of yourself and mm -hmm. you have to you know be accepting of that that's true now you wrote a book did, did, did you just uh, did you that, write a book no i have a blog you have a blog okay all right all right see my mistake that's my okay. fault. I didn't read that all the way. I thought it was a book, but it was a blog. Okay. Now, yeah. could you tell people, do you have any information as to what, what how people could go about now that we talked about, um, uh, we, we talked about mental health, um, where, where are some of the places that they could go from for help? Um, you know, for me, I just, I just, I still take therapy right now. I still have therapy. I enjoy my mental therapy. I really enjoy talking, things out it's it's getting me through through yeah. you know you learn a lot about yourself right but what i will say i do have um a resources page but i think for anyone who is new to therapy and is seeking to um get therapy i believe that before they just settle on a therapist they have to do their due diligence they have to do their homework right, right. so they have to number one fundamentally fundamentally understand what they're experiencing, what they need help with, mm -hmm. right? Because if you call the 800 number back when your insurance card, they're going to give you a, a host of therapists within their network. And that could be overwhelming to someone who has anxiety, right? right? So the way you cut that down is number one, understanding what your issue is. So okay. then that would shred down some of the therapists. Then understand what your need is. So that means, do you need a woman? Do you need a, a man? Do you, do you know, do you require them to be African-American? Do you want them to be Caucasian? You know, there's, there's a criteria. People need to develop a criteria in terms of what they need. Because right. I have a friend who was, um, you know, a, a black male from the city. Um, and he went to a therapist who was an old, an older white gentleman and it was unsuccessful. And he didn't, he's like, you know, therapy, you know, that doesn't work. And I'm like, no, it does work, but you right. have to, find you're compatible with, because, depending on who you go to, you can feel, he felt like he was being judged instead mm -hmm. of, you know, being directed in the right space. And I've had several people tell me that they didn't feel that therapy worked. So mm -hmm. I told them they have to develop a criteria. So understand if you want an older person, if you want a younger person, um, should their degree be in a certain area of study? Also, I encourage people to also look at how, look at the distance from your house to their, their clinical site, because if you get someone way out the way, that can prohibit you from consistently going because you're like, I don't feel like driving way out there. Mm -hmm. But if it's within a, a, a you know a, a decent um, distance, you'll be more consistent. Whereas you won't make up excuses. Mm -hmm. So therapy is a hundred percent effective. People just have to develop a criteria, mm -hmm. and once you develop that criteria, that list is going to shrink substantially. Mm -hmm. And then you'll have a few, and then you go online, you look them up. You look at what their area of study is. You look at their reviews. Right. That's also important. Right. Look at the, see, you know, how long they've been in that area of study. You know, talk to them. And, you know, when you go to be assessed the first time, you go assess them. Mm -hmm. You see if you can, if you feel like you'll be safe, is that a safe space for you? Do you feel that connection? Because mm -hmm. if you feel a connection, I wouldn't suggest staying with that there. I would say going to number two. Mm-hmm. Because it's important that you feel safe. You feel like this person will be able to understand you because you need them to be able to um, provide you with specific techniques that'll be conducive to your healing. Mm -hmm. Not someone sit there and listen to you and just take notes. Right. And then, all right, five minutes is up, are right, you go? No, right. it's not enough to just talk. People right. need solutions. They need solutions, right, uh, yeah. I had, right. to, I had to cut a therapist off for that because all they was doing was, I didn't feel like they was doing anything for me. You know, right. she would, I would, I would, we would get in there, sit down and talk. She would write things down and um, ask me questions. And I was like, that's it. I'm like, I said, I, I need more help than this. So I was like, I'm gonna have to find somebody else. So. <laughs> but it's good that you did that though, because yeah. you know, somebody else who's already, you know, on edge about seeing a therapist, they would have used that and be like, see, I know it don't work. I knew it didn't work. So I'm mm -hmm. not wasting my time. 
at least you understood that right. that wasn't a match for you. Right. Which why people need to understand and develop a criteria. Right. So that does, um, you know, make them, you know, it doesn't discourage them from seeking another counselor or therapist. Yeah. 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 Cause the second time around, I went through, once I came through the door, I told them exactly what I wanted, you know, whereas the first time I didn't, um, right. I was like, okay, I don't want to waste your time. And I don't want you to waste my time. This is what I need. If you can't provide that, then I'm going to go ahead and leave before we even get started. So, uh, yeah. <laughs> so that's how I had to approach it. <laughs> Yeah, I had to approach it that the second time around. I was like, time is, you know, time is money, you know? <laughs> yes, yes, seriously. seriously. <laughs> but, uh, hey, uh, thank you so much for coming on and giving, yep. giving out so much good, relevant information. There's so many people out there who are dealing with mental illness. Um, you know, seek the help. You're, we have to let the audience know if you're dealing with something, get the help. You're not alone. You're not by yourself. It's a lot of people dealing with it. I found that that depression medication was the number one prescribed medication in the country, yeah. which goes to tell you that people are dealing with a lot of stuff, you know, yeah. uh, but get the help you need. And uh, could, could we get your, uh, your, your information as to where you could be reached if someone want to reach out to you on your Instagram? So my Instagram page, the experience with K that's all one word and K is K A Y. Uh, also my blog is the experience dot blog forward slash. Um, and when they go there, there's a resources page that lists a whole host of resource pages. It includes text numbers and includes, you know, help for teenagers. It includes, um, chat lines, anonymous lines. There's a whole host of resources. And, and if, there is something that is not listed there. I encourage them to send me a message and I promise I will get them the information that they need. Okay. Thank you so much, Kay. Appreciate it, girl. No, no problem. We need to, I may, I need to bring you back again so we could talk some more about this. Cause That's like right. I said, this Let's is a conversation it. we need to be talking about <laughs> constantly. Let's do it. <laughs> constantly. You know what I'm saying? Um, I mean, this is, it's, it's, this is not a joke. I mean, we really right. need talk about this more but i want to thank you again for coming on and uh leave some comments if you have any questions or comments you want to you know um say about this interview uh also don't forget to like and subscribe and hit that notification button if you want to be notified for the next interview why am i my face so greasy i feel like i'm sweating up here <laughs> Jesus, lord but <laughs> anyway <laughs> all right so uh Okay, I'll talk to you again soon. Absolutely. And uh, peace, everyone. Enjoy your day. God bless.